A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I determined to take wisdom to live with me, knowing that she would be my counselor while all was well and my comfort in care and grief. For her sake, I should have glory among the masses and esteem from the elders, though I be but a youth. I should become keen in judgment and should be a marvel before rulers. They would abide my silence and attend my utterance. And as I spoke on further, they would place their hands upon their mouths. For her sake, I should have immortality and leave to those after me an everlasting memory. I should govern peoples and nations would be my subjects. Terrible princes, hearing of me, would be afraid. In the assembly, I should appear noble and in war, courageous. Within my dwelling, I should take my repose beside her. For association with her involves no bitterness and living with her no grief, but rather joy and gladness. The word of the Lord. be glad and shout for joy. With uprightness you rule the peoples, you guide the nations on
Dominus Vobis cum. Lectius Sancti Evangelii secundum mat secundum locam. Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority to overcome all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them forth to proclaim the reign of God and heal the afflicted. Jesus advised them, take nothing for the journey, neither walking staff, nor traveling bag, no bread, no money. No one is to have two coats. Stay at whatever house you enter and proceed from there. When people will not receive you, leave that town and shake its dust from your feet as a testimony against them. So they set out and went from village to village, spreading the good news everywhere and curing diseases. Verbum Domini. Today is a Franciscan feast of St. Lawrence Brindisi, a member of the Capuchin branch of the Franciscan family. And his birth in 1559, uh, by the way, died uh, 60 years later on his birthday. So hopefully that was a gift to, from God to him to welcome into heaven. And in 1559, think of the situation. The church had begun its process of re interior reform. There'd been a long period where lots of prelates, cardinals and bishops, and sometimes the priests, were making a lot of money. They ignored their spiritual duties. They took it for granted that people would be uh, Catholic and didn't take care of their souls. They were truly more of hirelings and brigands rather than good shepherds, such as our Lord warned about. And the church broke apart as a result of that neglect of the sheep, a lack of love of the flock. And it was a series of reforms, first beginning with a number of saints who were being raised up, and then popes like Paul III reforming his life, appointing reform cardinals, and those reform cardinals themselves already well on the way to reform, brought in the, not only the rest of the Council of Trent, which established the reforms, and they invented the concept of the seminary. There had never been seminaries. They helped clarify doctrine. And once that's all set up, it was up to the next generation to which St. Lawrence belonged to implement the reforms. And we see in his life that it took his sanctity to be able to implement reform, just as it did with one of the great popes of his early youth, Pius V, that that kind of sanctity, as well as commitment to reform, as well as learning, all combined together to put the church back into a new position of strength. St. Lawrence was born in the north of Italy 
and showed from a very early part of his life piety. From a very early stage, he was prayerful. And he also had natural gifts of rhetoric that he developed. This is key to all of us. Each of us has a number of natural gifts from God. And we then, with his grace, can continue to develop those gifts. And that's what he did. And he did it for the love of God. With his strong commitment to prayer, he felt the call to become a Franciscan Capuchin and joined his brother Lawrence. He was baptized Julius Caesar. Common in those days, you, you, you can see some of the difference going on in the way he's named. At this time of the Reformation, it was also the time of the Renaissance, this fascination with the ancient world and renewing, that's what Renaissance meant. It was getting over the Middle Ages and renewing ancient Roman and Greek culture. That's what they were trying to do. So naming your son Julius Caesar after a not so nice guy, good general, but not a nice guy. And he killed a million people in Gaul. That's, that's pretty serious stuff. Uh, but it was the glories of ancient Rome. But his entrance into the friars to recall one of those who was persecuted and a martyr of Rome, St. Lawrence, is what he saw as his new identity in Christ. And he also had wonderful natural gifts of learning. That's why we have this reading from the Book of Wisdom. He was very intelligent. He knew the whole Bible in both Greek and Hebrew. I assume he knew Aramaic, but he certainly knew the Hebrew parts, and he knew it well. And it was a, a tremendous gift, again, that was given to him, but he developed and he used in his preaching because so much of what inspired the Reformation was the lack of preaching from the Word of God. So few priests read Scripture and knew it and they didn't preach on it. They gave superficial homilies that were nothings because a lot of them didn't know how to read or write very well. They were so poorly trained. That was, again, another problem. St. Lawrence went all over Europe preaching. He, be, he used that gift of rhetoric, he used his intellectual gifts, and he went all around Europe, preaching the gospel from Scripture, especially his Lenten sermons. And there are collections of his Lenten sermons that you can access, and among other sermons as well, Sunday sermons and so on. And even when they were in the process of beatifying, the comment made during the examination of his life is truly this one is worthy of being made a doctor of the church. Doctor means teacher in Latin. And that he was recognized as someone who taught the Catholic faith in an exemplary way that others should imitate. That's what it means to be declared a doctor of the church. You proclaim the faith and you proclaim it authentically and well so that others can imitate. And this brings out another aspect of these gifts of God given to all of us. Our duty is to accept the gifts and develop them the best we can. That's what we have to do. But at the same time, we have to recognize they're given to us not 
for our sake, but for the sake of the rest of the church, so that he and others are made doctors of the church so that the church can learn from them. Some people are called to great holiness and monastic life, even the hermetic life, in order to be holy for the sake of others. Others are called to the service of the poor and the sick, again, for the sake of others, that these gifts are put in our trust by God so that we can use them very much along the lines of the parable of the three men who were given talents by God. And remember, a talent in those days meant 60 pounds to 65 pounds of silver or gold. So it was a huge amount of money. And we all have been given gifts. St. Lawrence of Brindisi was someone who received these gifts of preaching and understanding in order to help the church to grow. This is also our task. And we do so with the quality he also had and was well known for. He had very tremendous charity toward those to whom he preached and those whom he taught. He didn't say, well, of course, I know this better than you do. No, he saw and understood that his gifts were given to him so that he can grow in love by giving them away. And he was always kind toward those. And when you, again, it's important to think back in this period. There were a lot of people who, like St. Lawrence of Brindisi, defended the church, defended the doctrine. Many who did that. But a lot of them were really mean. They were just ornery as all get out. And you read the kind of talk uh, that people had toward their opponents. Um, a, a good example of it, you get it if you ever want to read it. If you know German, it's, it's a little bit stronger in the original, but the English gets across some of the uh, Luther's table talk, you know, where anybody who disagreed with him was a uh, recipient of various nasty names. It wasn't just Luther. It was folks all over. But it's the, those who explained the faith and defended the faith in charity who ended up as saints. Peter Canisius, Robert Bellarmine, Lawrence of Brindisi, three doctors of the church who defended our faith but did so with char extreme charity. While most of the others are forgotten, whether Catholic or Lutheran or Calvinist or whatever other group they might have belonged to, they're forgotten in their meanness. But those who explain the faith with trust in God and the charity of God, we celebrate on a feast like this and on the feast of these other saints. We ourselves want to have that great reward like St. Lawrence of being invited to heaven whether it's on our birthday or some other day, that's not up to us, that's management. God is management. We let him take care of that. But to accept his gifts and prepare for that entrance into heaven, this is our task as St. Lawrence lived it.